Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Things have been really, really hectic around the shop lately and in my personal life, so I haven't had time to get very much content for you. So, what I felt that I would do is just kind of do a retrospect of an earlier video that you guys might enjoy, so stay tuned. Well, good morning guys. It's Monday morning and it's another start to the work week and we have an alignment appointment to get to. So we've got our appointment at the big red triangle. Back for number two. So here we are back again at Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire is a place that I worked at for like seven years or better and three of those years was as the service manager at this very store so I kind of know the ins and outs of how things go on here and uh, I know what it takes and some of the headaches that it takes to uh, to run the shop it's a, a heck of a lot faster pace than what we're used to uh, at our shop but uh, I'll tell you what I left that service managers position for a reason and uh, it's what prompted me go out into business on my own so um, I'm glad to be rid of some of those headaches but because we do offer a shop and, and service after the sale I do end up running into some of that a little bit uh, these days but nevertheless uh, definitely a lot slower paced so anyways I'm gonna go in and see uh, Jody he's gonna do the alignment on this 09 GMC Sierra and I'll take the fusion back that I dropped off this morning next time you see me I'll be bringing I forget which vehicle it was I'm bringing back. The next time you see me, I'll be bringing another vehicle back for the third alignment of the day, and hopefully that should get us done for a little while. And we're back in the Fusion once again. Third and final call for an alignment. So I'm just getting ready to hop in the truck. There seems to be some guy burning up the streets on his four-wheeler. Well guys, we are at the shop today. It's Sunday and sometimes it's the only day I get to work on my own stuff. So today we're going to do an oil change on the old Mopar and uh, we're going to let you tag along. So one thing that I do have to do sometime this year, not really sure when I'm going to get to it, but I've got to replace the mufflers on uh, this car. I think I blew one uh, about a year ago and it would get a little bit rattly once in a while and I'll show you the difference. This I think is the good one, nothing, and this one, you can hear something in there for sure and uh, this is a Flowmaster and uh, I think we're going to replace it with something probably a little bit quieter um, at idle and something that's going to give us a little bit more blat uh, when we step on it so who knows anyways it is time for an oil change today we're also going to tighten up the starter and you remember from a video a while back where we replaced the starter i will put a link to that right above the uh, video here it seems to be catching just the edge of the star of the uh, flywheel so i'm not sure if it needs to be shimmed or if the uh, bolts have come a little bit loose. Regardless, it needs to be tightened up or something needs to be done. We're gonna see if we can fix that maybe today, but not before we get the oil changed. Let's see if I can do this without getting splashed. draining out we'll come around here and loosen up the uh, oil filter if I can't burn my wrist off from the exhaust 
We'll be doing all right. Son of a biscuit, that's hot. Might as well get that all over the exhaust too. That's undercoating right there. That'll help keep it from rusting, that stainless steel. A lot of people don't even put oil in the filters before they put them on the car. If you have the opportunity to do that and when you spin it on you're not going to pour it all out, it's always a good idea to put some in because in some cases an oil filter this big probably holds about 250 milliliters or about a quarter of a quart so you want to make sure that when that engine first fires up that it's going to get as, not, as much oil as possible uh, into the system before, uh, before start up. Otherwise, it'll be starting to dry. And always put a little bit of oil around that gasket so that when you screw it on it seals nice and tight and the gasket won't bake itself to the motor because of the heat. So that when the time comes for your next oil change you're not going to have a hard time getting the oil filter off because it's stuck to the motor. It'll actually have some lubrication in there and be sealed at the same time. So it's just preventative maintenance for the next time you do an oil change. So I can't read the date on that, but it looks like June the 18th of 17. So I don't drive this car enough to put uh, an oil change on it every 3,000 kilometers. I do it just basically once a season, and depending on whether or not I do a lot of driving will depend on how many oil changes I actually do. So I only put probably maybe 1,000, 1,500 miles on this thing a year. But that's my own fault. I should be driving it more. So let's, uh, I'm going to have to put the camera down so I can get that other oil filter on because it looks like I'm going to have to have two hands to uh, weasel its way up in there. So I'll set you down just for a sec. So I got the new oil filter up in there. It's all tightened up. We've got the oil cleaned off the exhaust from where it dripped down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grease all the ball joints and tie rods and uh, idlers, pitmans, all the good stuff and uh, make sure that everything's still good and tight there before we put the car down. And I would show you all of that but I am using my GoPro on the suction cup today and not on the clamp so I got no place to clamp it. So maybe I can stick it over here. How you doing over there? Everything okay? Yeah, things don't usually stick to the hoist arms very well. So I've got to put the car down and turn the wheels to the right a little bit so I can access the uh, the grease nipples on the inner and outer tie rods and on the idler arm on this side so because you won't stick you can't watch okay so oil change is done all the grease fittings are all greased up front end is tight so as far as the oil change goes we are done so what you didn't catch on video was me finishing up the greasing and putting the oil into the engine started up everything's fine so one thing I also wanted to do, and I didn't realize that I wanted to do it until just a few minutes ago while I was under here, kick down rod that generally attaches right to here, which is what gives it the uh, passing gear. Like when you step on the gas and give it some throttle, uh, it pushes that rod back, downshifts, and away you go. The rod that goes up from there is basically that thing. And I found it to be quite sloppy and, well, from 1979, old school. So it got me thinking that I remember that I had bought a kick-down cable. So 
I think what I'm going to try to do today is get the kick down cable which is a little bit newer technology it's more direct so the throttle response should be a little quicker and hopefully eliminate the responsiveness of stepping on the gas that, uh, that I've been missing although it has improved with the cleaning of the carburetor and with the Thompson's performance power blast plate I'm going to try this as well the unfortunate thing is that my battery is down to about 4% so I'm not going to be able to get it on camera for you but I will get you the results just as soon as I get it installed so stay tuned for that and we'll catch you once I get this cable installed on the vehicle okay so I've only got 4% battery left I'll try and do this quick I told you I'd give you an update on the throttle cable sorry not the throttle cable the kick down cable for this car and uh, we managed to get everything connected. Um, I had to kind of MacGyver something on the transmission to hold, a, like, a, like a makeshift bracket, to hold the cable in place. And then I, re, I routed that up to the carburetor, got it attached to the carburetor, and could not figure out a way to MacGyver a bracket up there. So. Dad's pretty good at doing stuff like that, kind of thinking outside the box when it comes to making brackets and stuff like that work. So when I get the uh, when I get to work tomorrow, if I decide I'm going to take the car, then I will get him to take a look at that and see if it's something that he can conjure something up. Uh, the car works good. Um, it just as it sits right now, it doesn't kick down. Um, meaning when I step on the gas, it doesn't downshift and, and, and take off. Uh, other than that, it goes through all the gears, no problem. So um, that update will be for another day. But nevertheless, we'll wait and see what happens. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that real early upload of an old car guy video. Don't forget, we've got more coming, lots more projects on the go. And this Thursday, we have the Car Guy and Six Fan Show Christmas special. I hope you can tune in. It's over on Grant Tommy's channel. I'm going to put the link right up here and you can set a reminder for that show. We're gonna have lots of fun and we might even have a giveaway or two. So stay tuned. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.